Joining us right now the, uh, to talk more about that is William Studebaker. He is the CEO of Robo Global. Good to see you, William. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having First, me. First, give us a, a look behind the curtain. What has been going on in terms of uh, robotics in, 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 and trading in these last two days? What have you seen? Well, we actually have seen pretty measured uh, behavior. Um, I would say for the most part, um, you know, investors recognize that this is a long-term trend, and I don't think a lot of our investors are pretty spooked by this. When you think about the growth that's inherent in these technologies, I mean, most of our investors are now coming to the conclusion that these are foundational technologies that are being applied to, you know, all industries, all markets. So the narrative really here is about growth and what these technologies can do to drive uh, better productivity and better growth. So once again, investors are looking beyond the daily moves and actually pointing to stuff that we've been talking about, Dagan, and that is of a firmer backdrop in terms of earnings, in terms of economic growth. Uh, the, it, the market run up is justified, but it's the issue of it got ahead of itself. It went up too fast. And one thing to point out is because you talk about your investors, but individual investors finally started getting into this market really in January with a hundred, more than $100 billion going into equity, mutual funds, and exchange traded funds. And that, that is of, if, you're, if you are looking at warning signs, that would be something to be concerned about here. What do you think? Well, as I look at our, 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 uh, our investor base, I think when you think about this index of companies that we've actually created, less than 2% of these companies are in traditional indices. So this is not really overly owned growth, if you will. Um, I think we're very in the early days here, and the awareness is just beginning to kind of increase. So Sounds like you're bullish. I'm very bullish. Yeah. When you think, again, about these technologies, as an investor, I couldn't be more excited when you think about the types of innovations that we're going to see in the coming years. Um, yeah. This is unprecedented. I want to hear about those innovations. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I was going to say the true testament of, of an ETF is the inflows, outflows, and you've seen people getting allocations to robotics, to artificial intelligence, and consistently adding to that. So when you get a sell-off like this, they add more exposure. They don't, actually don't sell the exposure. And you talk about the 2% the overlay into uh, uh, exposure they have now. They can't get it anywhere else. And can you talk about what that exposure is because I see some of these names Zebra Technologies, Cognex I mean these aren't traditional names people are getting exposure to through other ETFs so what, what are these companies doing? And, well, you, and you can't find these companies in any of the indexes you're saying? It's very difficult. Yeah. Um, we invest across the entire value chain of technologies and applications, everything that supports robotics, automation, AI. So think about technologies in machine visions, companies in the U.S. like Cognex or Kionz in Japan, uh, uh, surgical robotics, companies like Intuitive Surgical. Then you think about the integrators like Rockwell Automation, ADB. Uh, it spans across the entire you know, universe of, of, of technologies and applications. Yeah, but William, when one thing goes down, they all go down. I mean, we're talking about a market that was down 1,100 points yesterday so whether you're in robotics or you're in sure. you know financials you got hit sure well you kind of can't escape the correlations and market sell sell-offs like this so they go to one and so after the sell-off adjusts people kind of pick up the balls and figures out where the growth is mm -hmm. and when you think about here this is really the future growth um, technologies like robotics and AI are enabling huge sort of innovation and prosperity so I, I want to ask you about two things. One is the broader market, and the other is your specialty on artificial intelligence. On the broader market, how do you explain what happened yesterday? What are investors waking up to that they weren't attuned to a, a couple of weeks ago? On AI, tell us how it's affecting, how it's actually changing the economy. Where are you seeing these, these technologies changing the way people do business and work? So when you think about the market move, I think it's for the first time, what are we talking about? We're talking about growth. I mean, we've been in sort of an economic stall mode for the better part of the last decade. And so I think there's an adjustment process going on here where we're actually pricing in growth and maybe some potential some inflation. So, um, you know, any sort of, you know, change is an adjustment for the market. And I think that's what they're, that's what we're going through. And I think it's definitely healthy. Well, one thing to point out, because you were talking about the stocks not being widely held in a lot of the other indexes or indices, all of the major market in indexes, except for the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100, are in the red for the year. The hardest hit so far this year are smaller companies, mm -hmm. the very ones that you're talking about. The, the, Russell 2000 is down almost 3%. Mm -hmm. that, that's that, that of all the major stock market gauge, that's the hardest yeah. hit so far. So our, our index is actually still modestly up on the year. It certainly had a pretty good adjustment the last you know, three or four trading sessions, down probably around 8 or 9%. Mm -hmm. um, given the move that's had over the last 52 weeks, up around 50% plus, 
Um, again, this is an adjustment that uh, we sort of welcome. There's a lot of investors who have been trying to, to get a foot here in this market, or particularly in our index, they've been watching it go straight up. So you haven't so seen <laughs> individuals or ETF holders get nervous then, is what you're saying? No, even, not really. Even with the 1,000 points yesterday. I think, believe it or not, the valuation of our index is actually 20, the median PE is 21 times forward earnings. Mm. Uh, certainly not too demanding relative to the S&P. Well, I can tell you that all the trading, like all the retail trading platforms yesterday, all of the retail websites, like mutual fund company websites, S L O W, really slow, hard. Like to the TD Ameritrade yeah, and Schwab's of hard to execute trades. You know, that, well, that's that not good. Individual so, so we're talking investor. about investing themes here, and I think one of the things that's being being lost is that if I'm going to invest in robotics and AI, I'm going to invest for the long term. Will I am said that to you in Davos, right. Maria, where he's <laughs> yeah. investing for 2030 and in, in in this. How, well, this is not the 90s anymore. I mean, you're not right. saying, oh, like I want to yeah. buy a stock and get rich tomorrow. I mean, maybe you are in Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> but in the you stock are, market, I think people are, are a lot are. smarter today than, than, than what we were looking Look, I, at. I want to ask, take it back to the economy. Tell us how AI, artificial intelligence, the companies you're investing in, are actually changing the economy and the way people do business right now. Give us an example. Well, I, I think a big thing of what AI does, it's smart automation. It's about automating tasks. It's about bringing better productivity. Um, think about how it's being used in the medical industry in terms of you know, medical imaging. When a, when a doctor can look at, uh, at a cancer cell, um, he probably has a 10% error there. You have a, a, a machine through its AI that can look at you know, a million uh, visions or images of a cancer cell. It can determine basically with 99.99% .99 accuracy, you know, that's, a, you know, that's a cancer cell. It's so, incredible. Who's so doing that? What can be done today is incredible. Pardon me? Who's doing that? Well, you've obviously got Watson that's beginning to work on that technology right now. But this is going to evolve. I mean, these technologies are really exciting. I don't think that people should underestimate uh, the types of innovation that's going on. And what this world's going to look like in three to five years from now, I think people are going to have a hard time predicting it. That's that much change going on. When you think about what's going on, robotics and AI, then think about atom manufacturing, material science. Blockchain is it technology gonna, is going to kill jobs in the process. Why do, I don't why do think we need so. those doctors? If I, I, I think this is all about you know, robots are working alongside people. Look at the narrative that's happening with Amazon. Amazon began its sort of um, automation initiatives three years ago. They started out with 45,000 uh, warehouse employees. They've added 100,000 robots, yet they've added on another 45,000 employees. Mm. So in many cases, um, there's a big disconnect between how the perception is of, of where automation, what, what it's doing in employment. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we're at a, at a moment in time right now where we're going to see a, a very changed economy in just the next five years or so. And, and you're investing in it. So good for you, William. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. William Studebaker joining us there. We're